Okay, our reading today is in Exodus chapter 20. Okay, let's bow in prayer before we start. Exodus chapter 20 will be read. Holy Father, thank you for your love and mercy. We thank you, Father, for all those listening today. May we receive a blessing from your word. You give the increase. You teach us. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that reveals the deep things of God unto us. We thank you, Father, for salvation of our souls, that we have eternal life. We thank you, Father, for the grace of God that we're saved through the blood of our Lord Jesus, washed of our sins. Father, we thank you and pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Exodus chapter 20, and God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days thou shalt labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son nor thy daughter, thy maid servant nor thy maid, uh, manservant nor thy maid servant nor thy cattle nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth and sea and all that in them is and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his donkey, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. And all the people saw the thunderings and lightnings and the noise of the trumpet and the mountain smoking. And when the people saw it, they removed and stood afar off. And they said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear, but let, let uh, not God speak with us, lest we die. And Moses said unto the people, fear not, for God is come to prove you that his fear may be before your faces, that ye sin not. And the people stood afar off, and Moses drew near unto the thick darkness where God was. And the Lord said unto Moses, thus thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, ye have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. Ye shall not make with me gods of silver, neither shall ye make unto you gods of gold. An altar of earth thou shalt make unto me, and shalt sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings, thy peace offerings, and thy sheep, thy oxen. All the places where I record my name, I will come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou will not, if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build it of hewed stone. For it, for if thou lift up thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. Neither shall go, thou go up by steps unto my altar, that thy nakedness be not discovered thereon. Okay, we're continuing in, uh, continuing in Revelation chapter four. And we, we've been looking at the lang this language about these four beasts and that we've seen that 
these beasts are a picture of God himself. And uh, we know that because uh, Ezekiel chapter one tells us these things, say. And, and uh, I just want to show you um, something over in Ezekiel. Well, since we're in chapter four of Revelation, look at verse six again, four, six. And before the throne, there was a sea of glass like unto crystal. And in the midst of the throne and round about the throne were four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And then uh, when you get to verse eight, it says the four beasts had each of them six wings about him and they were full of eyes within, say. Now go over to Ezekiel chapter one and you're gonna see uh, the same description over there, uh, even though God uh, uses uh, living creatures, it's the same teaching. Uh, in Ezekiel chapter one, but uh, um, well, verse five, look at one five. Also out of the midst thereof came a likeness of four living creatures. Now, Revelation, uh, God used John to write four beasts. It, it's it's the same teaching. We, are, we already went over this, but um, um, look at verse 18. This whole description uh, in chapter one is a vision of God. Uh, look at verse one, Ezekiel one one. Now came to pass in the thirtieth year, in the fourth month of the, um, uh, the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I was among the captives of Jebar, that the heavens were open, and I saw visions of God. Say, so. Uh, what follows after this is a description of the visions of God, see? So we're right on track about these four living creatures. They're a picture or a figure of God, okay? Now, uh, look at verse chapter 1, verse 18. As for their rings, they were so high that they were dreadful, and their rings were full of eyes round about them four, see? Similar language as in Revelation, full of eyes. And yet uh, God's saying here in Ezekiel 1, this is the vision of God. So we know uh, those, those beasts, four beasts in Revelation are a picture uh, of, of God himself. And we already looked at the calf, the man, the, um, the calf, uh, the lion, and the eagle. It's all found here in Ezekiel 1. And flip over to Ezekiel chapter 10, and it's going to say full of eyes as well. Um, look at, look at uh, verse 12. And their whole body and their backs and their hands and their wings and the wheels were full of eyes round about, even the wheels that they four had. Again, figurative language of visions of God. And then 13, as for the wheels, it, it was cried out unto them in my hearing, O wheel, and everyone had four faces. The first was the face of a cherub. The second the, uh, face was the face of a man. The third, the face of a lion. The fourth, fourth the face of an eagle. Um, the cherubims were lifted up. This is the living creature that I saw by the river Jebar. It's, that's the same thing as Ezekiel 1.1, 1, 1, say. And, and so uh, you have some language here in Ezekiel 10, but it says full of eyes uh, in, in Ezekiel 1.18 and Ezekiel 10.12. So go back to Revelation 4, and, and that's why I read you those verses um, uh, to show you what the Bible teaches about who these four beasts are, God himself. And so uh, we left off in, um, uh, in verse, we, uh, we need to pick up now verse nine, because last week we looked at the holy, holy, holy Lord God Almighty, which was, is, and is to come. And, um, uh, and so uh, we see that the full of eyes are in verse eight and also in verse six. And remember, uh, we looked at the spiritual teaching to be full of eyes, uh, 
Uh, we don't look at that literally like this beast has eyes all over him, but it's a spiritual picture of God that is full of light. He's full of the gospel. When your eye is clear, your whole body is full of light and God is light. See? And that's why you have that language full of eyes see? and uh, and God is full of light. And uh, remember the verse I read to you in first john if you want to go over there uh, i'll read it again first john chapter one and verse five it says this this then is the message which we have heard of him and declare unto you that god is light and in him is no darkness at all see full of eyes god is light all right so now we get to verse nine and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever. Okay. Now we already know that, uh, that, uh, that God reveals himself. There's one God, um, go to Mark chapter, uh, 12. Look at verse 29 there. Mark chapter 12. And verse 29. And Jesus answered and uh, let's see, Mark chapter 12, verse 29. And Jesus answered him, the first of all, the first of all the commandments is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Okay, and so God uh, is one. There's only there's one God, and yet the Bible teaches uh, that in the Godhead there, there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Go to Matthew 28. Jesus uh, says, uh, uh, "Go baptizing them." Look at verse 19. Matthew 28. Look at verse 19. Go you therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. See? And so uh, there's the one God, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. When you read the scriptures, we know that the, there's God the Father, uh, the Son is spoken of as God. The Holy Ghost is spoken of God, yet there's one God, see? So God reveals himself as Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, see? And so the other thing is I want to show you is in um, Acts 17. <clears throat> the, the, uh, the word Godhead, go over to Acts 17. <clears throat> Look at verse... <clears throat> Uh, 29 there, Acts 17, verse 29. Okay, it says, For as much then as we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the Godhead, now that Greek word Godhead, it means divinity or divine. Uh, it's, it's, it points to God himself. And notice how he mentions three things here. Not to think that the Godhead is like unto gold, silver, or stone. See? And we know that the Godhead uh, is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. See? And so uh, here, Paul's mentioning three things. Gold, silver, stone, graven by the art of man's device. See? And so uh, we could find the word Godhead here. In Acts 17, uh, if you flip up, flip over to Romans, <clears throat> look at chapter 1, verse 20. <clears throat> it's uh, There's the other place where you could find Godhead. Romans 1 and verse 20. <clears throat> For, um, 
for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made even his eternal power and godhead so that they are without excuse so, so again his godhead means divine divinity uh, the last uh, place i uh, you'll find godhead uh, is in colossians 2 9 go over to colossians chapter 2 look at verse 9 there <clears throat> for in him that's the lord jesus in him dwelleth all the fullness of the godhead bodily see so that word means divinity divine godhead so it's in uh it's in acts uh 17 29 and romans 1 20 and uh and right here colossians 2 9 and that word godhead means divine or divinity okay and so god shows himself uh, uh, as fathers in the scriptures, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Uh, go back to Revelation 4. And so it says there in verse 9, when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne uh, who liveth forever and ever. Well, uh, of course, uh, God lives forever and ever. Uh, our Heavenly Father, um, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God. Uh, only God uh, has is, is almighty. And, uh, and um, as it says in verse 8, holy, 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 Lord God almighty, see? And, uh, and so the, that's the Godhead. Uh, three times it's mentioned, holy, 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 see? And so um when those beasts and we found out that those beasts are god himself give glory and honor to thanks and thanks to him that sat on the throne so what it's saying there that god's given thanks to god if you will and and uh and we're going to see in the bible how god glorifies god or god uh gives thanks to god okay and so I want to show you how uh, the Bible uh, teaches that. Go to Luke chapter 10. Look at verse 20 and 21. <clears throat> Luke chapter 10, uh, 20 and 21. There it says, um, not... Uh, Luke 10, 20 and 21, notwithstanding in this rejoice, not that you're, that the spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And in that hour, Jesus rejoiced in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, God thanking God. Jesus is almighty God. Rejoice in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou has hid these things from the wise and prudent and has revealed them unto babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. Okay, so there you have God thanking God, because the Lord Jesus is almighty God. And we've seen that in Revelation. Holy, holy, holy is the, is the Lord our God almighty. See? And so um, go to John chapter um, 16 and look at 13 and 14. John chapter 16. Look at 13 and 14 there. Howbeit when the spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come, and he shall glorify me. See, the Holy Spirit glorifying Christ, God glorifying God, if you will. 
the Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth. And that's God. And Christ saying he, the Holy Spirit, shall glorify me. And, and Jesus is almighty God. So you have God glorifying God. For he shall receive a mind and shall show it unto you. Okay. Now flip over to the next chapter, John 17. Look at verse 5 there. And now, O oh Father, Jesus speaking here in his prayer. And now, O oh Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So the Father glorifying the Son, God glorifying God, God the Father glorifying the Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, God himself. See, and so uh, you have uh, these this language, and I've got a few more verses. Look at um, uh, Matthew seven, uh, 17, look at verse 5 there. Matthew 17. <clears throat> Matthew 17. Uh, verse 5. Uh, while he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. See? So the Father uh, glorifying his Son, hear the Lord Jesus Christ. See? Hear ye him. And remember, um, and, uh, and Isaiah, if you go to Isaiah 42, look at verse 8. Isaiah, back in Isaiah, look at 42 and verse 8. And remember, I just read to you John 17, and I'll read it uh, while you're going to Isaiah. It says, uh, now, O Father, glorify thou me with thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. That was John 17, 5. Now look what Isaiah says in 42, 8. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. And so uh, God glorifying God in one God, and that's why he says, my glory will I not give to another, see? And yet in John 17, Jesus says, now, O Father, glorify thou me with the thy own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. So uh, God, he didn't give his glory to another because Jesus is God. He's the, the one God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, see? And that's why uh, God glorifying God. There's one God. And this is uh, and he and this is why he says, I will not give my glory, uh, and my glory will I not give to another, because they're the one God. See? And remember back in John, go to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Do you remember in verse, look at verse 58 there. And Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. And in and, and Exodus 3, 13 and 14, Moses asked, uh, What is thy name? And who, who should I say that sent me? And he said, tell them that I am has sent you. So the Lord's saying that he's, I am. He's, he's, the, he's God, see? And what do you think the Jews did after he said that in verse 59? They took up stones to cast at him, see? Because they heard him say, I am. That's, he applied that name to himself. Now go over to John chapter 10. <clears throat> look at uh, look at verse 30 and John chapter 10. Look at verse 30. <clears throat> I 
and my father are one. Then this is the second time. Look what the Jews did in 31. The Jews took up stones again to stone him. And Jesus answered them, many good works have I showed you from my father, for which of those works do you stone me? And the Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blaspheming, because that thou make, being a man, makest thyself God, see? And so this is the reason they, st they were trying to stone Jesus, and Jesus uh, um, is exactly who he said. He's saying, I am, and that the Father and I are one, see, one God. And this is why uh, they tried to stone our Lord Jesus Christ, uh, yeah. because he's almighty God. And so you have these language, this language here. Uh, go to Hebrews chapter 6. Um, Hebrews chapter 6. Look at verse 13 in Hebrews 6. Look at verse 13 there. <clears throat> For when God made promise to Ab made promise to Abraham because he could swear by no greater, he swore by himself. See? God swearing to God. He swore, he made an oath to his self himself. See? And so uh we see that God thanks God, God gives glory to God, even though it says, uh, it might say Father, and it might say the Son, giving uh, the uh, Son glory. Uh, it's God giving God the glory. One God, and and that's, and the uh, hero Israel, the Lord our God is one. And uh, if you if you remember, um, um, oh, let's look at one more in Revelation 19. Go to Revelation 19, look at verse 4. <clears throat> 19, 4. The four and twenty elders and the four beasts fell down and worshiped God that sat on the throne, saying, Amen, hallelujah. God worshiping God, if you will. Four beasts fell down and worshiped God. Remember, the uh, the Lord Jesus uh, prayed to the Father and bowed down and and uh, uh, God worshiping God, if you will. God giving thanks to God. Remember, God spoke to God. Look at uh, Genesis one twenty six. Now again, I'm um we're talking about God and infinite almighty God, uh, and yet uh, we're using the Bible uh, to define these, these, uh, uh, these words and, and to teach us. And so uh, look at uh, Genesis 1, look at verse 26. Here, here we have God speaking to God. God said, let us make man in our image. Well, who's he talking to? Let us, the Godhead, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, see? And let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth, say, God speaking to God, let us make man in our image. And so, um, this is uh, the, going back to now to um, Revelation. Uh, I went over this because um, the language in chapter four and verse nine it says, "And when those beef, those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to Him that sat on the throne." See, and and a God given glory and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ. And God, the Godhead, because remember in chapter three, verse 21, it says to him that overcometh, will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and sat down with my father in his throne. There's 
there is one throne and the bible says heaven is thy throne let's say and so uh remember don't have your mind thinking that there's a literal throne there but the bible says heaven is my throne and so uh this is where god is and this is where we are uh where we sit in heavenly places the bible says in ephesians and so um holy 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 uh is the lord our god almighty lord god almighty so verse nine and when those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever so god given god glory and i just gave you the verses that that uh, teach that um jesus says now glorify me with the glory i had with thee before the world was the father glorifying the son god glorifying god because jesus is god the father is in the one god we have father son and holy spirit say now go to john uh first john chapter five first john chapter five look at verse seven there first john chapter five verse seven for there are three that bear record in heaven the father the word and the holy ghost and these three are one see one god and yet god reveals himself uh father son and the holy ghost say and that's why um uh, paul would say the godhead is not he mentioned three things see and that's why in revelation it says holy 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 is the lord our god father son holy spirit and so jesus uh would tell i read you in john 10 jesus says i and the father are one and uh um so jesus is called everlasting father did you know that uh go to isaiah 9 chap uh, chapter 9 look at verse 6 isaiah 9 and look at look at verse 6 he's called mighty god he's called everlasting F, uh, everlasting father look at uh, 9 verse 6 for unto us a child is born and unto us a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulders this child is christ the son is the lord jesus christ and his name shall be called wonderful counselor the mighty god the everlasting father the prince of peace say and so um god reveals himself as i said father son and holy spirit and yet the lord our god is one one god say and so um this is what the bible uh teaches and so god gives glory to god so back in revelation it says and those beasts give glory and honor and thanks to him that uh that sat on the throne who liveth forever and ever uh and then if you notice we're not in chapter five yet but look at verse 10 where it says these ten thousands which is the completeness of believers uh, uh in verse 11 it says the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand and thousands of thousands and verse 12 saying with a loud voice worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power riches wisdom strength and honor glory and blessing see seven seven things there seven words and and uh, uh already uh we could see uh, in verse nine uh the beasts give glory honor and thanks and it's it's uh, those words are, are right here in, in chapter 5 verse 12 you have um uh, glory and honor and and uh, uh power and so forth and so uh this this honor and glory goes to the lord jesus christ 
that sits on the throne. Our heavenly father sits on the throne. God sits on the throne, say. And, and that's why uh, it reads, holy, holy, holy. And uh, do you remember what Thomas called Jesus? Go to John 20, 28. This is, this is what a true believer calls the Lord Jesus Christ. Go to John 20, 28. Remember, Thomas wanted to see the print of his nails, and and uh, um, and then verse. I'm going to start. I'm going to start reading twenty twenty six. And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, "Peace be unto you." Then said he to Thomas, "Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands." and reach hither thy hand and thrust it into my side and be not faithless but believing and remember thomas said unless uh uh unless i see if you go look at 25 he says uh the other disci disciples um therefore said unto him we have seen the lord but he thomas said unto them except i see that his hands, the print of his nails, and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side, I will not believe. And so the Lord Jesus showed Thomas uh, his, his hands and so forth. And look at verse 28. And after, uh, and verse 27, after he showed Thomas uh, these things, and 28, Thomas answered and said unto him, my Lord and my God. Say and so uh jesus is our lord and our god okay and and again the nature uh god is one father son and holy spirit and so uh, he that has the son has the father and so um if you go back to revelation 4 um now look at look at verse uh, 10 it says um okay um I, I think since i have these words i think i should give them to you uh, i didn't uh, i overlooked this see the verse um uh, see that word glory in the greek it means uh, glory or praise see when these beasts give glory and that greek word means glory or praise and then honor it means highest degree of dignity in the greek that's the word honor and then uh thanks in the greek it means grateful thankful see and who liveth forever and ever which is god himself okay so in and now we get to verse 10 and it says the four and 20 elders uh fall down before him that sat on the throne so uh we know the father sits on the throne we know christ sits on the throne see there's only one throne and heaven is my throne it says the bible says um i think we looked at that already but uh if you want the verse uh i think it's going to be uh, isaiah 66 1. let me just read it real quick for you it says um Thus said the Lord, have, the heaven is my throne and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that you build unto me and where is the place of my rest? So heaven is his throne. See? So you can't look at that like a, a literal throne. Uh, you have to let the Bible tell us what the throne is, heaven. And that's where God is in heaven. And so that's where the Lord Jesus is in heaven. And so when we are saved, we are seated in heavenly places, the Bible says. So uh, back in Revelation 4, the four and 20 elders are the, are the fullness of believers, uh, as we see the number 24. And then uh, remember, um, the beast had there are four beasts and they had six wings which would be 24 see and and uh, the wings uh are as a figure of salvation so that would be the fullness of salvation that comes from god 
from the four beasts. And so um, now in verse uh, 10, it says the four and 20 elders, which would be the fullness of believers, because uh, back in verse four of, of Revelation four, it says these 24 elders um, are clothed in white raiment, see? And, and that's salvation. That's a picture of being saved. Um, just flip over to chapter three. Look at verse five there of Revelation 3, 5. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed in white raiment, see? So we know we're right, we're right on track as far as um, who these 24 elders, they're believers. The, they, they are the ones that overcometh. That's all that's you and I that have been <laughs> born of God. Say we're clothed in Christ's righteousness or we're clothed in garments of salvation. And so we get that from Revelation 4:4. 4, 4. See these elders sitting. Uh, in other words, why are they sitting? Because they're reigning. We're we're reigning with Christ, see, uh, and to sit on the throne uh, spiritually is a picture of reigning, uh, just like a king uh, sits on his throne. Uh, he reigns. And the Bible says uh, that we reign uh, with the gospel. Uh, just look over at Revelation 5 and look at verse 10, see, and has made us to our God kings, spiritually, we're kings and priests, that's why we have uh, a, a, a crowns of gold on our head, we're kings, we reign with the gospel, see, and, uh, and we shall reign on the earth, see, and a king reigns, and so uh, we reign with Christ, and and the gospel of christ see and so back in revelation 4 and when those uh and the four and 20 elders uh which is the fullness of believers fall down before him that sat on the throne and so god sits on the throne uh the lamb sits on the throne the father sits on the throne uh you have all this language that holy 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 is the lord god almighty and uh, uh god himself sits on the throne and so um uh, that sat on the throne and worship him that liveth forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne uh saying okay now to to cast your uh now remember uh what kind of um what kind of uh crown was it well uh four chapter four verse four tells us it says their crowns were crowns of what gold right and and so gold is a figure or a picture of the gospel uh look at chapter three look at verse 18 i counsel thee to buy of me gold well do we buy literal gold from god of course not uh, the gold is the gospel tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich see rich in faith and so when it says crowns of gold it means that we reign with the gospel of christ with the gospel see and so uh verse uh, verse uh 10 just says uh they uh, they that worship him that liveth forever and they cast their crowns but go we went to verse four because it's crowns of gold see and so uh a crown um a king is crowned and uh, and we're kings spiritually speaking but when it's when god gives us that word gold then we have to uh tie that in with uh, the gospel because i counsel thee to buy of me gold and and only through the uh gold is the gospel that comes from god okay and so um so to cast their crowns before the throne uh 
would uh, before God is is a really a picture of that Christ reigns with the gospel, that Christ uh, his death, burial, resurrection, um, that he's the power uh, and and he gets all the glory. See, uh, because uh, he's the savior. See those six wings. Um, the fullness of salvation that come from God, the four beasts, see, and so this is the this is what that's teaching, and cast their crowns before the throne. Okay, so Christ reigns. If if you go over to Revelation fifteen, look at verse uh, our 11, uh, eleven. Look at verse fifteen there. Revelation eleven and verse fifteen. <clears throat> and the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. See, they cast their crowns before, before the throne. So he shall reign forever and ever. And remember, to, to a crown implies spiritually that uh that you reign a king reigns see and so when you see the word crown there it, it has to do with reigning just like and that's why the bible says he has made us kings and priests so we have spiritually crowns of gold uh we reign we're spiritually our kings and we reign with the gospel of christ just as it says here he shall reign forever and ever the lord jesus and the other one is in uh, revelation 19 look at verse 6 revelation 19 and look at verse 6 there and i heard as it were the voice of a great multitude and the, as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of the mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. See? And so just remember, a king reigns. And, uh, and um, this is what we do. We reign with Christ. And so um, um, let's see. I think that should do it um lord willing next week we'll look at um the the last verse let's see in in revelation 4 uh where it's going to say um uh, thou art worthy o lord to receive glory and honor and power okay and so uh they're casting their crowns before the throne and and uh and we see the spiritual teaching that comes by casting their crowns and then we're right on track when it says when they when they start saying thou art worthy o lord to receive glory honor and power so we'll look at that and finish uh chapter four lord willing